fun. Gold finger. He's the man, the man with a Midas touch. Do you expect me to talk? Oh, no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to buy. Cool Isn't there a rumor that you actually said that to a witness on a stand once upon a time? Never. <laughs> okay. Never. Did I just make that up off the top of my head? That was good. Mr. Goldfinger, where have you been for the last three uh, series? We the champs. <laughs> we the champs. Uh, did you take part in uh, with along with three million of your other friends uh, hanging out in downtown Toronto the other day? I, I'm now over 40, so I'm smart enough not to go. Uh, but uh, f- some lawyers from my office went. And they were just overwhelmed by the love and excitement and just the sheer number of people that you saw on the screens. Uh, it was remarkable, like nothing I've ever seen before. Go Take me back. So we, we go on to the we, – we didn't do anything. The Raptors, they go right. on to play in the NBA final against Golden State. Right. In your head. And don't give me this you know foresight, I can tell you now. <laughs> go back to when that long – layover took place between going from game seven of the last series to game one. Tell me about what was going through your head in the chances the Raptors had against Golden State. Well, they beat, they beat the Bucks in six. Six, sorry. So, yeah, so six. after they beat Milwaukee, you know, it, after in the Milwaukee series, there was a critical turning point where they won the double overtime game. Mm-hmm. And after they won the do- double overtime game, it's like they figured out Milwaukee. They totally demoralized Milwaukee. They figured them out. And then from that point on, Milwaukee was shook and they hadn't bounced back. And then the moment Budenholzer started commenting about Drake, yeah. I knew that they won because they were focusing more on Drake than the game itself. Do you think inexperience in Milwaukee, while they had big stars, they had great, great, great players, the inexperience sort of led to that as well? Yes and no. I don't know how much experience means because if you want to talk experience, Golden State had all the finals experience and Toronto had very limited finals experience and Toronto still won. Uh, But Toronto had definitely been there before. So I just don't know what that narrative is. Just There's there's so much downtime between games. We need something to talk about. So experience sometimes I I believe is a bit overrated. In any event, the moment they, they started chatting about Drake, was the moment I knew that the series was done. And after the Raptors beat Milwaukee in six, I, I couldn't believe it because I thought going into that Milwaukee series that Milwaukee was a better team, if you'll recall. Yeah. Milwaukee was up 2-0, yeah. and, and I didn't think we'd get by them because Milwaukee, based on the regular season, based on the playoffs at that point, they were dominant. And the fact the Raptors won, I thought they were lucky. Then when they faced Golden State, I didn't think they had a chance in winning because I thought Durant was for sure going to come back. The moment Dur- uh, Durant was back... Even if he wasn't healthy, they weren't going to win because it's just too much star star power. Right. Even after the Raptors won game one of the final series against Golden State, I didn't think they were going to win because you saw what happened in game two. Yeah. Golden State had all these backdoor cuts. You had different guys stepping up. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins really stepped up. Uh, They looked like a a dominant professional team. Very flat. And then the Raptors went on. If you were to, I were to tell you that at the start of the series, the Raptors would sweep the Warriors at home at Oracle. Go three of three. I would have thought you were nuts. Exactly. Who bets on that? Who 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 calls that? Who predicts that? Nobody. So the Raptors say with the Blues playing in Boston and winning the Stanley Cup. Unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable. So it makes you think. Well, is home court advantage really that important? You know, the Raptors won three or three. I don't know, but the fact that the Raptors won it was totally shocking. So the fact they beat the Bucks was shocking. The fact that they beat the Warriors the way they did was shocking. Even with the Warriors being depleted. Yeah. You know, injuries are a thing in the finals. You know, if you look at LeBron's runs, when LeBron lost uh, to, to the Warriors, he was without Kyrie and Kevin Love. You know, it was basically the Cavs, LeBron featuring a bunch of nobodies. And LeBron had another run where it was just him guiding the team. Right. So re- injuries are a thing. Uh, it doesn't matter. In order to play, in order to win the lottery, you, you got to play your ticket. And the right. Raptors made it there. And full credit to them. So I, I was just really shocked that they won. That's the one thing that drives me about this narrative about wanting to put an asterisk on the Raptors because they didn't, you didn't beat the quote unquote Golden State Warriors. You beat Steph Curry and the bench. That's, no one. There was no narrative of that when Golden State beat LeBron and Matthew Dellavedova and nobody else. Nobody else. Right. Like literally, no one else. So, uh, and and you're right. The the injuries are a part 
of the NBA. It's a grind. Look at Kyle Lowry. I didn't hear any, you know, guys playing with his thumb was wrapped for two series, right? Like it's, so uh, those injuries take place. You can jam the asterisk though, people. Like you didn't, nobody made that, nobody made that narrative for, uh, well, you didn't beat Cleveland with all the military in there. Well, the Raptors still, Clay was formidable. He was unbelievable when he was in there, right? He had him and Steph are two of the best shooters of all time. I, I agree. So, so a, a few things on your point when it comes to kind of aberrations in the finals, people point to this Toronto team being similar to that Dallas team with Dirk and that Pistons team. Well, now you have a Toronto team. And if you're calling the Toronto team, a, team an aberration, these aberrations are not aberrations. They're more so commonplace that there is an opportunity to win and teams like Toronto or Dallas or Detroit seized upon that op- opportunity and won. And that's why I'm very proud of them. Does this change your opinion, Brian, that in the NBA you need the three-headed monster, quote-unquote, to win an NBA title? Or for me, just to offer my opinion, not have or having Durant and having the big three there or even four, if you want to put Draymond in there, shows that you can't have the bench depth necessary to compete. What do you think? That's a tough question because if the Raptors had another superstar, you know, they, I think their run would have been much easier. Uh, but I- injuries do play a part, and you want to be ready. And in order to get by, you need that depth as well. So you need a bit of both. It just, it, it's a lot of it is luck. I got to tell you, a lot of it is just dumb luck. Like if Kawhi shot against Philly in game seven, does bounces another way, yeah. the Raptors are out of it. It's just dumb luck. If uh, Bledsoe in, 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 against the the uh, the Bucks, if Eric Bledsoe is hitting his jumpers, you know, do the Raps get by the Bucks? I don't know. If uh, if if they eased in the Warriors, they eased in KD a bit better, or if uh, Clay Thompson doesn't go down with injury, do the Raptors win? I don't know. A lot of it is just dumb luck, but you gotta be there. You gotta uh, pay pay that lottery ticket to play and win the lottery, and, and giving yourself that opportunity to succeed. That's all you could do. That's all you can plan for. I asked, and we're chatting with Brian Goldfinger of Goldfinger Personal Injury Law, Mark Million here as well, crying for some reason. Why are you crying over there? Oh, it's my allergies. <laughs> <laughs> like you're bowling over there with the uh, Raptors. Like they, 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 it. they did win. Are you a Milwaukee Bucks fan? No, June like, is the career? absolute okay. worst for me. <laughs> Just the worst. Ha, uh, to, uh, to your point, have you ever met a Milwaukee Bucks fan outside of the state of Wisconsin? Yeah, right. I haven't met one in Wisconsin. There either, you go. But there, there you go. go. Yeah. But of course, I didn't realize there was three million uh, Raptors fans until about a couple days ago. So, <laughs> you know, there's that too. Um, I asked Rod Black this question the other day, and I know there's been a lot of conversations around this. <laughs> Should there or would there or could there be or does there need to be an asterisk beside the Raptors win because of the fact that Golden State probably and should have been and could have been a lot better had they not been dealt with those major injury blows? Absolutely not. Because the way the Raptors managed uh, Kawhi's load, so to say, is going to be a model for NBA stars on a go forward basis, in my humble opinion. Uh, you know, Clay's load wasn't properly managed during the regular season, and yeah. they had that long playoff run, which may have contributed to his injury. You had Kevin Durant being eased back into the game in the finals, and he played the first 12 and a half of 14 minutes. That's hardly easing a player in. Now, uh, KD was hitting all the shots. You think they, got, they pushed him back in. They said, "Dude, we're we're losing. We need I, you back in there." I don't know. I, I I blame his agent. I blame his agent because the player is going to want to play. He's a competitor. He wants to say, "I'm here to rescue the team." That's what the player is going to say. It's like Stanley Cup Finals because guys don't want to take gonna day, go. day after a Stanley Cup Final. The the team doctor, I believe, is going to say, "You know what? You're clear to play." Part of it is the coach. The coach playing him. Steve Kerr played him too many minutes to start the game, easing in and is maybe playing five or six of the first 12 or 14 minutes. And then I blame the agent because the agent says, there's too much money here at stake. If you're not 110%, you are potentially not able to play next year, which he may not play next year. He's losing out a year on his prime, and he's potentially losing out on big money in the free agency uh, uh, for in his upcoming free agency. Yeah. So I blame the agent. The other question I wanted to ask you, again, I'll take this from the uh, conversation I had with Rob Black a couple days ago, or yesterday, I should say. He asked me the question, said, if I told you at the beginning of the season we're going to bring this guy, Kawhi Leonard, in, he's going to play one year, he's going to win the NBA championship, and he's not going to stay, are you okay with that? Absolutely. 
I've been a fan of the Raptors since day one, 24 years, and a lot of those years were very, very dark. And my fandom has been totally vindicated and justified. I don't want to be a fan and just feel like an idiot, like my hope is going to something like like fool's gold. Like, oh, we made it to the first round of the playoffs. I remember when the Raptors first made the playoffs. Oh, I mean, I, I was so excited. And then they would lose and keep losing. Then they get swept by Washington. Then they get lo- lo- embarrassed, humiliated to LeBron when, when he made LeBronto. You know, and the fact that <laughs> that we were able to win a championship, you just you, you just feel at ease. All this hot air as a fan, you, you listen to it, but you realize, you know what, it's all hot air. They just got to fill up time on, on the 24-hour news or sports news cycle. Uh, and, and it just, it, it really justifies my passion for the team. Uh, just a quick update on the news side of things as well. We're just getting uh, some uh, communicate. I know that Doug Ford is uh, shuffling his cabinet uh, in the local area. Uh, Lori Scott from uh, Corth Lakes Brock. Uh, she was the Minister of Labor. She's now apparently uh, been named the Minister of Infrastructure. So there you go. And Vic Fidelli has been, re- oh, and Todd Smith, now Children Community and Social Services. That was the Lisa McLeod uh, situation where she had the autism file and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out over the next little bit, too. So um, there's some changes afoot as the uh, cabinet is being shuffled. Uh, right now at Queens Park. Let's get back to uh, the Raptors, of course. And of course, now the there's two big storylines right now. Of course, the NBA draft, right, which is I believe it's tonight. Uh, yes, yeah, it is tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, to make the the NBA draft one night, they got NHL draft tomorrow. So I'm kind <laughs> of uh, I'm all drafted out. Um, but I mean, obviously, right now it's the Kawhi watch. And if you were to put money on it today, would you say Kawhi is back next year? Yeah, for a one and one. He'll sign a one-year deal with Toronto for as much money as he can with a player option and then reassess. You know, you have Lowry. He's got one more year on his deal. So does Ibaka and Gasol. He may opt in for one more one more uh, year on the deal. By the way, who's the bet- worst drunk, Gasol or Brett Hull? Oh, Brett, Brett Hull. Brett Hull. <laughs> Brett Hull. Street <laughs> mile. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Those two get tuned pretty good, though. I'll tell you that much. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, th- this is the best. If Kawhi's serious about winning, and I believe he is, this is his best opportunity to win and roll it back and also not have to compete with what goes on in the West. Mm -hmm. The Western Conference, in my opinion, is much more difficult than the Eastern Conference, and the Raptors have proven their record without Kawhi when he was load managing was pretty good. I don't know what it is off the bat. Um, and, And this is where he can win, and the medical staff here has treated him great. I understand. Look, if he wants to go home back to L.A., I get it. Toronto is not Los Angeles. But if he's serious about winning, he can do that in spades here in the Eastern Conference in I, Toronto. I'd be interested in getting your opinion here on this, Brian. It, Kawhi's having the group. He's going to have his meeting with the management uh, team at the end of the season, and they're going to discuss the contract. And they're going to be able to show him, uh, listen, we can manage the load. It's It's undoubtedly been successful for you this year. 60, 65 games we can get you in and still be likely a number two, if not the number one seed in the conference. When Kawhi and his group of people sit down with the LA Clippers, that can't be something that's on the table, I would think. You can't, you can't load manage Kawhi 20, 22, 15 games and have the Clippers be a serious top four entry in the West, even with Golden State in the peril that they're in today. I, I remember when the Raptors played the Clippers in L.A. and Kawhi was load managing them and the Clippers had their full roster and the Raptors totally spanked them. So they sent a message, the Raptors players without Kawhi, saying uh, our guys without you are far superior than the Clippers guys. So if you're considering going to L.A., you got to take this into consideration. We're a better group of guys. Here. Right. And what I don't understand, everybody says, well, the Clippers roster is good. The Clippers roster doesn't have a single all-star on right. it. Patrick Beverly is not an all-star. Not a long-term solution. There, there, there's not a single all-star. You have Danilo Gallinari, who's an injury waiting to happen. Right. You have Lou Williams, who's getting older. I think you got a, two nice pieces there in Shea Gildress, Alexander, and Montres Harrell. I like those pieces. But you got no five- or six-time all-star in Lowry. OG, uh, uh, what, Pascal Siakam is going to be an all-star this year. Right. He's going to be an all-star. And then you have OG Ananobi, who didn't play all year. Uh, he he will be good next year. And you have Fred Van Vliet, who can start on any NBA team, who got one vote for NBA Finals from Hubie Brown. I don't know what more you want. Did right. you mention, I, and during that, did you mention Green? 
Danny Green? No, I yeah. didn't. Danny Green, Danny Green, his finals, I was rather disappointed. Yeah, and that's I think that's the one. They came together. Yeah. Do you think that they're boys enough to leave together? Well, if Kawhi leaves, Danny's leaving. Yeah. And if Kawhi stays, Danny's going to stay. The Raps will resign him. Yeah. I, I think his his playoff performance was a, a bit of an aberration. I think he might have been banged up. I, I know he's a better player than that, and right. he's exactly what you need. You need a, a three and or you need a defensive guy who could shoot the three, a three and D guy, and that's what he is. And his finals didn't show what he can do historically. No, correct. Right, like he will he will move to the median here. Yeah. Uh, if they get there again he, next he's, year. He's a piece you want on a championship team, and he was yeah. this year. Right. Running up against the clock here, but I want to ask the question. I mean, it, you mentioned a bunch of guys' names there, and for me it was Pascal Siakam. I was just in awe every time I watched this guy hold a basketball this during the playoff run. And he, I, for me, most improved, I thought. He was a very big, nice surprise, a nice surprise for me to watch. And just ways that he was able to find himself open, uh, get a few dunks in there. But you know what? Whether it was just on the inside of the arc or outside as well, he was making things happen. And then you talk about Pascal with the rebounding. I thought... There was not a better rebounder on this ball club than Pascal. The, uh, I, I disagree. The best rebounder, I think, was Kawhi Leonard. Okay. I think he was he was the best. But when it comes to Pascal's matchups, number one, he's never been to a finals, and he averaged almost 20 points in a finals, and he had to see Draymond Green a lot of the time in the right. finals. In the Eastern Conference finals, Giannis was guarding him. Yeah. Right? And in the uh, semifinal, he was being guarded by Joel Embiid. So every time he looked up, he had all NBA defenders in front of him. Yeah. Not an easy task for a guy in his third year who is a low first-round pick who nobody expected this from, who only started playing basketball in his teens. Yeah. Insane. Yeah, no, and it's all about getting in those dirty areas, eh, right? Because sometimes you got to put the shot up, you got to rely on your supporting cast in order to be able to make sure the points get on the board too sometimes and i thought that was a good team effort all over because i asked about, again but that question too was you know you had a calming influence in Kawhi. if everyone was all hyped up and overthinking it do you think we'd be talking about an nba championship right now or do you think he brought that patience to the room Kawhi brought patience to the room yeah, yeah i think Kawhi and mark gasol for that matter did because i don't think the raptors would be a championship team if we didn't have gasol uh, if we still had Valanchunas, I don't think Valanchunas could do a, a, as good a job on Vucevic in the first round against the Magic. Uh, in the second round, just ganging up against uh, or, or, or defending Embiid. In the third round, uh, defending Giannis the way he did. And in the fourth round, nailing some clutch threes. Brian Goldfinger of Goldfinger Personal Injury Law here on the regulars for a couple more moments. Mark Million here as well. Let's get into the fun stuff. Uh, sure. Your latest blog post about Uber. We don't have Uber in Peterborough yet. I know people want Uber, but you know it's it's one of those uh, those interesting scenarios where you don't really know what your legal rights are when you get into a situation like an Uber compared to a taxi cab company like uh, the, like we have here in Peterborough right now because again insurance policies those sorts of things right so it used to be that there was no fleet insurance for Uber uh, the drivers and passengers alike would get into the Uber. Uh, vehicle. This is before Lyft came, so I'm, I'm using just Uber and think that they're insured. And sometimes they weren't because people were driving Ubers without telling their insurance company, "Hey, I'm driving Uber." There's a big difference between just driving your car for normal day-to-day -day commuting purposes versus driving it for Uber, which is for commercial purposes. And insurance companies didn't like that because their risk goes through the roof once you start driving Uber. Different driving habits, different driving patterns, more driving. Uh, then the Financial Services Commission of Ontario, the regulator of insurance and the government made a sweeping change saying that there is now fleet insurance uh, coverage available for, our, for all Uber drivers, but the app must be on and they must be, be driving Uber, which gives essentially full protection. But in addition to that full protection, it's also important that you have your own protection because that Uber protection might not be enough, especially if that Uber vehicle is involved in an accident with somebody who's driving illegally, uh, essentially without insurance. Tell me about what a pastor should know if they're getting into one of these ride-sharing things. What they should know is that it's always a good idea to have their own car insurance, frankly. If you have zero car insurance, and I know, look, I know for some people it's not practical, but you're not going to be as covered if you don't have access to your own car insurance because there may be cases whereby... Uh, an Uber vehicle is involved in an accident with an uninsured vehicle or the Uber vehicle, for whatever reason, uh, they're not registered properly through their own insurer, the driver isn't registered properly, then you might be SOL. Uh, and and your, your policy limits go down significantly from $1 million to potentially $200,000 through the motor vehicle accident claims fund if the Uber driver isn't driving without proper insurance. 
Uh, that's why having your own insurance is a good idea because they can pick up the slack. Again, I know it's not possible for everybody, but you will be more insured if you have your own car insurance as opposed to having no insurance. Is this a good move now by a lot of these insurance companies to have this in place, especially now that we're seeing more and more of these ride-sharing programs start to launch? Well, it, it's namely by Intact uh, Insurance, Bel Air via Intact or, or vice versa or just Intact, but it was a good move by the government to acknowledge that, hey, these Uber and ride hail uh, services and apps are very are increasing in popularity. We have to do our best to protect members of the general public. That's why they introduced it. So the really the, the move there was a solid one by the government. But believe me, there are still some pitfalls with respect to the Uber coverage. Yeah, certainly. And I, I mean, what you say about the the insurance thing, like for example, and it's not big. I deliver pizzas once in a while, and you know they don't like me using my car for, as you said, commercial purposes. Right. I didn't call my insurance company and say, "Hey, by the way, I'm delivering pizzas a couple nights a week, so right. let's jack, jack that on my insurance as well." You're just kind of playing with fire. Unfortunately, as I'm sure it is with a lot of Uber drivers, as I was when I was delivering pizzas, you're also on the hook for all the maintenance on your vehicle as well. It's so innocent because I have, I have cases whereby. You know, somebody spends half their time living in Quebec or Montreal, half their time living here in Peterborough for whatever reason for work, but they're insured under a Quebec insurer and they're insured under a Quebec insurer because they believe that Quebec is their primary address, but really it's here in Ontario. And then the Ontario insurance company, you're involved in an accident, you report the claim and the Ontario insurance company says, wait a minute, you should really be insured here in Ontario which technically you are, but you're not using the proper address. You're using a Quebec address. And the result is your insurance in Quebec saves maybe 500 bucks a month mm -hmm. or five, per, 500 bucks a year. But the insurance, comparable insurance in Ontario would be double that, 1,000. Yeah. So then you're not getting insured. And it's just innocent things like that, like failing to disclose simple things. Like I, I drive it from time to time to deliver pizzas or I have a residence here in Ontario, but I also have one in Quebec. Little things like that, insurance companies grip onto them and use it to deny your claim, which makes your your life really difficult and our lives difficult as well as lawyers. Had you ever come across anything that's come across your desk but it involves obviously uh, ride sharing programs or someone involved in an incident? All the, all the time. Ride sharing? All the time. So, so the reason I wrote the blog post is because the city of Toronto is looking into a mandatory uh, training or not licensing but more so training for Uber drivers and Lyft drivers alike. Because the moment you hit that button, you don't know who's picking you up. If, if, if you're hailing a taxi, you have to assume that the taxi ca company has either vetted the person or in order to get a proper taxi license that the city has vetted the person. Either way, the person is able to drive and, and, and drive soundly and, and you have some confidence in that person. With Uber, you know, you just need the app. You, I don't know what background searches they do. You know, you don't know anything about this person's driving habits, et cetera. So that's why I wrote about it because the city has recommended through a study to do some sort of training programs for all these drivers. Whether or not that comes into pass, it needs to be made to law. It needs to pounce, uh, pass Toronto City Council. But that's a, a very good idea. And that's why I wrote about it because anything to increase safety of passengers and Uber drivers alike is something that, that we support. And that's ideally why the police services board here in Peterborough looks after the cab situation they don't you know they they oversee that not city council my understanding is uh but right now again not we don't have uber here in peterborough we might have it one day who knows but i, I think there's a lot of people waving a flag going we need to have uber here it's the best thing going but so increasing their transit uh what they're doing is they're putting more money or subsidizing like a rideshare service like uber or lyft because the cost of, say, expanding transit or running more buses is more expensive than the cost of subsidizing somebody's Uber ride, which costs six bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you get two bucks off your Uber ride or Lyft ride or whatever it is, and it becomes four bucks and the city subsidizes the other two, that's a neat solution as well. There, are Brian Goldfinger of Goldfinger Personal Injury Law. Where can people find you, my friend? Certainly visit the website, goldfingerlaw.com, or you can always email me at brian, B-R-I-A-N, at goldfingerlaw.com. What do you go to hibernation as a sport? Sports fan now until uh, hockey season starts, no. or what, what are you up to? What are you looking no, at? No, I, I, I like rooting against the Toronto Blue Jays. <laughs> it's not very hard to root against them because they're so terrible. Oh, Mike Trout last night. Yeah, yeah. and um, you know, just the NBA off season never stops. You know, there's always a story, there's always a saga, and I can't wait for the next tip off, and I can't wait for Kawhi to resign. Knock on wood. There we go. Uh, Brian Goldfinger of Goldfinger Personal Injury Law. <laughs> You are a clever, resourceful man, Mr. Bond. Well, thank you. Perhaps too clever. <laughs>